Oh my goodness, and here we are again. <laughs> Good evening, dear friends. Um, so happy, so happy that you could be with us and uh, join us um, on this. Um, it, it got warm again, and we're also getting thunderstorms. So, you know, it's the trade-off. Um, my name is Nicholas Vaselli. Uh, I am the artistic director of Theater Breaking Through Barriers. And yes, guess what? Coming to you live. Uh, right here from deep in, heart of, deep in the heart of the Thunderdome and glorious and gritty midtown Manhattan right on 42nd Street. And on behalf of all of our artists, I want to cordially welcome each and every one of you to Theater Breaking Through Barriers, 6th Virtual Playmakers Intensive or VPI 6 Star Changers. Wow. Um, I think, uh, I think that, I think that with the work that we've been generating, if, if we're not changing some stars in the course of this work through the energy and the positive um, creative force uh, of our artists, I, I, don't know what, I don't know what will change stars. Uh, the work that we have been creating has been so wonderful. I, don't, I, hope, I hope that you've been tuning in and you've had an opportunity to see our work. Uh, this is this is not this tonight's play is number 14 in uh, out of 15 plays that were generated um, just over over the period of a few weeks. Three weeks ago, these plays didn't exist. But these artists who are randomly paired together, names out of hats, and so no one knows who they're going to be working with or what they're going to be doing. This is the product of that. So it's been uh, mind blowing. It's been such a great gift to be a part of and um, to just watch, watch happen. So I hope you had the great opportunity to see last night's show. We had a uh, very, very powerful play uh, by Richard Lear um, called We the People uh, with some really great discussion to follow. Um, tonight, we're going to be shifting gears slightly. And I, I, wanted, I wanna mention Richard's play because I wanna mention it in, uh, I wanna mention I, I want to talk about tonight's show, perhaps in slight context of last night's show, um, although they're two different plays. So tonight's play was written by, yeah, an amazing artist, Nina Nina Key. Now, Nina, you had the opportunity of, of seeing their work on Monday uh, during uh, Enrique Huili's The Interview, another very intense play. Um, and and uh, yeah, not, not the... Not, when I say not an easy play, I don't mean that it was, it was, I mean, it was well written, but it was one of these relentless plays that you're watching it and, and you feel the pressure of it. Um, but, oh my God, Nina was amazing in this. Uh, I, I, yeah. But now you're going to get a chance to see Nina's writing chops. So I mentioned to you last night that there is this artist, this wonderful artist, uh, Rihanna Basor. Now, Rihanna, this is her this is her first appearance during our VPIs, any of our VPIs, but she's, you're getting a double feature because you're going to get to see her directing prowess tonight and tomorrow you're going to get to see her performing chops. So Nina, uh, Nina wrote it, Rihanna directed it and stellar cast folks, Subin Kara on, Jennifer Bradley, Brie Clouser, Brie Clouser, come on. I, I just, I, those names, compel you to stay. So without further ado, I think we want to begin. But before we do, we like to ask our artists to provide a bit of an audio description describing themselves, uh, their characters, uh, for the benefit of those who are tuning in um, who can't see us. So um, dear artists, would you please describe yourselves? Hello, my name is Brie Clouser. I will be playing Nas. I use she, they pronouns. I am wearing a red jumper, a sleeveless jumper with a blue sports bra underneath. I have brown hair that is tied back and I'm wearing dark eye makeup. My name is Jennifer Elizabeth Bradley. I am playing the character of Lieutenant Gail Jardin. I am wearing uh, a, a gray under tunic topped with a bright green button down shirt that is open that is covered with a jean jacket 
and I have long blonde hair that has been pulled tightly back and I identify as she, her, hers. Hi, my name is Subin Kara An, she, they, he, playing Esther, who goes by they, them. I'm Asian in my mid-twenties. Today, I'm more femme presenting with a septum ring and nostril stud piercing, and I'm wearing a loose cardigan with a sleeveless top with a good portion of my face covered with hair and pale lips. Oh my goodness. All sounds really wonderful and compelling, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy Nina Key's No-esque. Hello? Hello? Anyone out there? Hello? Yes. I'm Lieutenant Gail Jardin. To whom am I speaking? Wow, a lieutenant. Your name? You can just call me Nas. Nas. Hmm? Nice to meet you, lieutenant. Nice to meet you as well. Is this it? Just the two of us? Hmm? Uh, not usually. There's... I've been here a few times. Well, five, actually. Five? At didn't get chosen, of course. <laughs> Hopefully today is the day. But yeah, there, there are always at least three of us. Hmm, so where's our third? You hear that? Is that humming? Hello? Hello? You made me forget the melody. What do you want? Well, maybe you could turn your camera on. I'd like to see who I was talking to. Oh, fine. Hi. Hi! I'm Nas. Wow, you're really pretty. How long have you been here? I, I mean, dead. And, and how I'm long- I'm Gail Jardin. And you are? Master. Hi, Esther. Oh, this is going to be amazing. I just know it. Well, shall we begin? If I recall correctly from the debriefing, we only have 30 minutes to decide. Let's get to know each other a bit first. 30 minutes is a long time, and it could be useful to get to know each other. Sometimes I go weeks without talking to someone or even seeing anyone on my screen. They say, hell is other people, but honestly. Whatever, I don't care. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, I bet that hurt. What happened? I just got electrocuted. This fucking chain on my fucking leg. Esther kicks the chain. Oh, fuck, stop it. We can get electrocuted through our chains? Does, does that usually happen? Only if you don't participate or follow the rules the way you're supposed to. I see. They didn't mention that at the debriefing. Oh, we are still prisoners. Until we decide which one of us should be free, that is. Fine, I'll be part of it, okay? I'll help make the choice. Just stop fucking electrocuting me. I take it you're not putting yourself up for freedom, then? Whatever. I mean, no, I don't care. Great. So it's just Nas and me. Ooh, can I go first? Okay, sure. Great. Great. <clears throat> I, Nas, officially nominate myself for freedom and to be reintegrated into the stream of life. I have been here for, a, wow, 12 years now, and I have done a lot of useful work for the institution during this time. I am completely rehabilitated and ready to rejoin life and society. Uh, thank you. Vote for Nas. Okay. Well, I, Lieutenant Gail Jardin, officially nominate myself for freedom and to be reintegrated into the stream of life. Before my death, I raised a family and aided my community. I was a leader and soldier that dedicated myself to the defense of life 
liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Sardin has a French name, but is totally American. I served, Where are you from? I served well in life, and I've served well here. I am industrious, hardworking, and fully reformed. Please allow me to return to life so that I may continue to help others. Okay, so now what? Do we vote? Well, there should be a keyboard underneath your camera. If you press the escape key and type whoever you're voting for, it's coded to- uh, No, I don't think so. I'm not doing that. What do you mean? You're gonna get electrocuted again. I mean, if I'm being forced to participate, and I am, I'm not voting based off of the stupid things you two just said. Then how can I get your vote? I mean, how do you want to vote? How about what you two did to get assigned here in the first place? You go first. I'm not the one who's nominating myself for freedom. I don't really think that's necessary to figure out who should get to leave. Oh! I can't see shit! What? I forgot to say, I, I'm legally blind. And it, ob since obviously Jarden is in a wheelchair, in case that was a deciding factor. I don't look blind. I said I'm legally blind. I'm visually impaired, sweetie. Wait, are you saying that you should get to go free because you- Oh, no, 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 I, I don't think about it that way, but you know, able-bodied people might. And let's face it, if you and I vote for ourselves, then that means Esther is the deciding vote. Hey, don't look at me. Uh, I, I'm queer and non-binary. Me too. Well, bisexual. Me too. Except for the non-binary part. But I'm older. Well, is being ancient really a pro or a con? Someone might think you deserve it less because you've already lived enough life. So, I don't understand what you're saying. Besides, Esther is a person of color. Again, so because she's a person of color, that cancels out us being disabled. Even between you and me, we have two vastly different disabilities. So what kind of logic is that? I said I'm not nominating myself. I'm just putting it out there just in case it's a deciding factor. How else are we gonna figure out who deserves to leave the most? That's disgusting. We're people. You can't decide whether humans deserve to be re-entered into life based on a checklist of qualities. Humans are more complex than that. Well, this is the only person here who's not non-binary. I can see why you've chosen to vote five times, but never got to leave. Wow, <laughs> five times? You must be kind of an asshole for you not to be chosen after five times. Does that make you want to vote for me more? I was pretty devastated myself after that last time. I got really close, but... I lost out to a 12-year-old. A 12-year-old? What could a 12-year-old have possibly done to be assigned here? We're sealed in isolated chambers in the bowels of a spiritual underworld. No one can hear us. Still, I'm really not supposed to say this stuff out loud. Especially here. Oh! I can type it in the chat. Oh, wow. A 12-year-old did that? And still got chosen. Oh, yeah. Youth was definitely at play there. I'm just saying. Fine. If we don't choose by who we are, or whatever disadvantages or advantages we've received in life, and I don't think we should, then maybe we should by what we did when we were living. Exactly. So spill. Well, Le Jardin was in the military, so she probably killed a whole bunch of people. And there's no bigger crime than taking another person's life, am I right? How dare you? Well, did you or didn't you? War is war. There is no way to avoid having casualties. 
Oh, I was right. Oh, I bet you killed hundreds. It wasn't like that. It wasn't... I didn't... Just stay it. Fine. I was on assignment during the Vietnam War. I was given the task to guard a small village to protect them from infiltration. But the villagers, they didn't want us there. They thought we were the invading force and they sabotaged our efforts as much as they could. We came to help and we did whatever we could to help them, but they didn't want it. Wow, that sounds so hard. Couldn't you talk to your boss or something? The higher ups were busy dealing with bigger problems. So, what happened? We ended up being driven out. So you left the people you were supposed to protect? Some of my soldiers were angry at how they'd been treated. So as we were leaving, they were blowing off some steam. I can see from their point of view, these villagers, they were ungrateful savages. They had no idea what we could have provided for them because they never let us in. They never gave us a chance. Get to it, Jordan. What did your soldiers do? They were pushing some of the villagers around, taking some of their things that we needed to live by ourselves in the jungle. But one of them went too far. He grabbed a little boy and was pretending to carry him off. Pretending. His father came after him. After us. He burst out of the trees with a machete. It all happened so fast. I had to protect my men and I had no idea whose side he was on, so I fired my gun. So that's it. You killed an innocent villager. No. The little boy jumped in front of him to try to save him. And the bullet went through him. I killed them both. And the village? A few months later, it was burned to the ground. I don't know what happened to any of them. Oh, I'm guessing right around now, I may be looking like a pretty good candidate to re-enter life. You still didn't say why you did. Well, I can tell you right now, I'm not responsible for the death of an entire village, and I didn't shoot any small children. I'm not voting until you share, too. <sighs> okay, fine. May or may not have let a girl to complete suicide. What?! I kind of let a girl to complete suicide, okay? What is that supposed to mean? Look, I, I know that I seem really charming and cool now, but when I was alive and in, in high school, I was a bit more studious looking without the being studious part. So, you know. No, I do not know. I wasn't very popular. I had one other friend. Nancy, this, this girl with a limb difference. Well, we only hung out with each other because no one else wanted to hang out with us. But truthfully, I resented it. Like, there was one other girl with a disability and we have to be friends? She was actually really irritating. So you killed your friend? Well, no, there were these popular girls. And they were, well, you know, mean. I, I mean, these girls weren't very nice to me, but they really didn't like Nancy. I think it's because she didn't even try. She didn't try to fit in at all. It was like she almost wanted to stand out, limb difference and all. They went out of their way to mess with her. They sound like assholes. I kept following them around until they finally started letting me hang out with them a little bit. And one day they were joking around about Nancy and I had this idea. What idea? Well, it would be funny if we just acted like she wasn't there. 
she wanted so badly to be acknowledged, right? Like to stand out. So we looked past her instead of at her. Didn't answer her when she talked, stuff like that. It caught on. Other people started doing it. Like I said, these girls were really popular. By the end of junior year, no one was talking to her or even acknowledging her or even looking at her. The teachers noticed, but Nancy was just Nancy. She didn't do anything. She tried once to, to talk to me a few times, mostly asking why I was doing this when I was supposed to be her friend. I didn't answer, of course. Of course. Maybe I should have. But uh, maybe, I don't know. Maybe she was depressed and maybe she would have done what she did anyway. You're disgusting. I may have killed a man and a child, but I was always loyal. I shot in defense of my men. Lieutenant, you have no idea what it's like attending Sunnyvale High School, not to mention the pressure that young people face these days. Both of you suck. I'm not voting for either of you. You were the one who demanded that we tell the reasons why we were here. I thought it would be bad, but you two are fucking monsters. Oh, you have no right to judge us. You're the same, even if we don't know what you're in here for. They made a place for you down here, too. At least I know I don't deserve to go back out there. And I don't want to. You don't want to leave? You want to stay here. What did you do? What happened to make you want to stay inside the institution? I fought back. I felt broken and suffocated. So I suffocated someone else. Who? Before I died, I was married. I had a husband who beat me down emotionally and physically every day. I haven't seen him yet, but he deserves to be here. If there is a god, my husband will never even have the chance to vote, the chance to leave. The way he tortured us... Us. I got pregnant. My second year of marriage, I had it because he wanted me to. And then... Oh, shit. But why? Why would you kill a baby? I told you I was fighting back! But it wasn't the one who was hurting you. It was just an innocent baby. If you hated your husband so much, you should have just left. Or, or you could have called the police. <laughs> I tried, he was the police. I ran twice, the second time with the baby. When his cop friends found me, they brought me back home. Told me I just had to work harder on my marriage. The baby. Oh, crap. I think we broke her. You're right. You're absolutely right. You should stay here. You should be here for all eternity. Yeah. Esther, honey, can you hear me? Esther, press the escape key and type my name. N-O-Z. You're despicable. Shh. Little one. It's time to go to sleep. But what else are we supposed to do? <laughs> I take it back. We should have never got to know each other. We, we should have just voted. I didn't have anywhere to go. I'm all alone here too, but at least here, I know what to expect. And here I'm nobody but everyone else is too. That baby didn't deserve to live. In that world outside there, I mean, she was too good for that hell. Too good for this, because honestly, what's the difference? Uh, you don't think my baby's here, right? She she didn't do anything. She, pro she probably went straight to the other place, of right? Of course. Of course. No, the baby didn't do anything. Not like us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of, of Your course. Your baby is in the other place. It must be. I'm I'm sorry. I'm 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 still so sorry. 
Um, so now what do we do? We have like two minutes left. And we're all pretty fucked up. Rock, paper, scissors for it? No. Esther says they're sorry. And I believe them. I'm going to vote for them. Oh, what? Jardin? A Esther says they're not nominating themselves. Why would you? After what I told you. You said you're sorry. I think that means you're probably the most rehabilitated out of all of us. Hey, I said I was sorry too! No, you didn't. And neither did I. I, I, I don't want it. I can't go back out there. You can. You just have to remember that you're not nobody. Not in here or out there. None of us are. But why? I have to hope that in spite of all our choices and our time in here, that living means something. Nas, you'll vote for Esther too, right? Nas! Okay, fine. This will be the sixth time I've been here and I haven't been chosen. Say the words, Esther. Come on. Say them. I, Esther. Good. Keep going. Officially nominate myself for freedom. And to be reintegrated into the stream of life. happens this fast? I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. Life begins on the other side of despair. You know, they could just all let us out instead of making us have to vote like there's only space for one person to receive redemption. True. But it is the institution after all. My time will come, right? Sure. Yes. Our time will come. Oh, great. We even finished voting for a minute and they want us to get back to work. Well, back to the grind then. Let's get on with it. Wow. How about that, you guys, huh? How about that? I, I, I love this. I love the play. I love what it invokes. I love, uh, wow, uh, such amazing work. Thank you all so much. Come on back on. Wow, all right. We have some time, so we need to, we need to unpack all this. Hey, Subin, Nina, Jen, oh my goodness, Rihanna, Bree. Thank you guys so much. Um, I, I I will say the first time I read this this play, I I I I really it really caught me because it 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 attempts to understand and explain at least in, or gives an interpretation of something that is greater than us, right? A bigger picture, bigger picture item. Uh, and and I, I, I'm always fascinated by that. I'm always fascinated by the metaphysical, what goes, what, you know, what happens after, what happens beyond. Um, I, 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 I really love this. Thank you so much. Nina, I have to start with you since you are the source of these words. Um, tell me what prompted this, this play. Was it was it something that was swirling in, in your mind? Was it the discussion that you got into? I'm mean, whatever the case, it was very fascinating. Um, so the play definitely came from the actors, um, 100%. Um, I had a little questionnaire that I asked everyone. Um, <laughs> and I think there are a few questions on it, like, um, 
what is a role that you played that you loved and uh, and or a role that you would like to play mm -hmm. um what are some things that you do you don't want to play you know and and things like that um and that first conversation um unfortunately Subin and Rihanna weren't able to make it but um I was in the Zoom room with uh, Jennifer and Brie um, and was privy to a uh, really wonderful conversation. Mm -hmm. um, wonderful, uh, maybe not in content because it was a lot of like, <laughs> it was like a lot of the struggle, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but wonderful that I was able to, uh, you know, be there. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe, maybe you two could talk about that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Brie and Jennifer. What I just remember that, when, that were said? <laughs> I just remember that when, that when we had that first that, that pairing, uh, everybody at, at the end, everyone sort of met the groups met. Everybody left, and you guys were the last. <laughs> You guys are the last and loyal few to stick behind <laughs> and talk about it. So it so when I when I see that, I say, okay, something is something's really cooking here. And I love that. I find that just so compelling. Um, yeah, I I, I, uh, I I just wanted to know how this all uh, like what what brought this to the surface where where you are, you know, because you all have you you all play these souls that have made so many mistakes clearly mistakes that have taken you out and sort of put you into a confinement um in in a in another realm that you can't continue forward because of this 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 damage that you inflicted i i, I find it interesting i i don't want to get too much into the metaphysical discussion now because we, i want to give you all a break before the next show mm -hmm. so but know that we are going to talk about it in terms of questions like, do you believe in second chances? And what, what do you believe about the, the what, what do you, you know, I think so much of this is wrapped in this whole idea of our existence. And I find that also interesting because this is something that in all of the plays and in all of the differences in these plays, these ideas keep recurring. Um, and that I find um, quite amazing. Um, so, uh, Rihanna, you got to direct this one, huh? Uh, what, tell me, tell me your ideas and thoughts throughout this whole process, this journey. Well, um, I was just blown away by the talent that was in my rehearsal room, both in the script and in, in the performers. And so I felt really fortunate to get to play in these waters because everyone was so open-heartedly enthusiastic to be doing this work together. And it is confronting personal work. My first impulse when I read the script is how much it reflected the little bits of my performers that I observed and felt from them and how excited I was for them to be guided into such a personal work and a fast process. Mm -hmm. I had such a wonderful opportunity to perform in No Exit, which is some of the source material of this play or mm -hmm. um, some of the threads in this play. And so I brought um, some previous insights into what it is to be in a room of judgment mm -hmm. where peers are pitted against each other. And so I really wanted my performers to think about how they played the game of forgiveness and when they meant it and when they didn't and when they lost the game and when they tried to get it back. Because I think that when we, forgiveness is an elusive idea, right? Who decides what that is? And I think Nina's great play really asks that. When do we qualify for forgiveness? Who gives it to us? And in this play, I felt that it was the characters themselves that needed to forgive themselves in order to move forward. And mm -hmm. my performers were so eager to just go one more layer down, one more layer down, one more layer down, because Nina's play is bottomless. Mm -hmm. And I had the actors to go there with me. And so it became fascinating to find the next layer of 
the pursuit of these characters because they're ever active. They're always after something. They're never resting. They're never feeling. They're always doing. And I love characters like that. Yeah, I agree. I think I think that's it. Again, when you have such compelling material and you've been able to create uh, several wonderful characters to help um, illuminate this, I find it so fascinating. I, I, I tie this loosely to what, what happened to, to Richard's play last night and why I wanted them playing opposite each other in this regard was because both of these plays deal in many ways with a trial and with judgment on something that someone did that was that that they were guilty of doing uh, a horrendous act a horrendous what would be considered a horrendous human act and in last night's play it was the idea of you know there was a, an actual trial where someone was defending the, the 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 three individuals who you know committed these acts it was also a, much, a very very political play by the way tonight's uh sort of focuses a bit more into that idea of the trial and the idea of forgiveness. And as you exactly said, Rihanna, the forgiveness of yourself and, and, and the feeling of, am I ready to be forgiven? And, you know, so it's, it's quite wonderful stuff. Um, so now, now, now I please, I have to turn to the artists for this one. Um, and I want to start, I'm going to start with you, Subin, because Subin, you, 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 um, your character uh, is very, very, I mean, at, at, at least we get the idea, does, certainly does not want to be a part of this, is very removed from this and uh, clearly very tortured. And, uh, you know, we don't necessarily see that in the very, very beginning, aside from the fact that you, well, we do see it from the beginning, but we're not quite sure why that's revealed later on. Um, what was this like to play and, and, and to, to play it opposite, opposite these, these other two wonderful artists? It was really interesting. I mean, because like, you know, this is like obviously written based off of, you know, my, my answers, you know, like what parts like do I want to play? And then like my answer was that like I wanted to play someone who's like a total mess uh, okay. that's a part of me too you know like for example you know the school i went to is like very big on american realism um which they can testify to because we went to school together um mm -hmm. and you know in like scene works we would do like closer or proof i mean closer is not american but like you know we would do proof mm -hmm. and i would get cast as claire instead of catherine when i'm like closer to catherine so yeah, from the beginning was interesting because it was like, oh, like, it's like something I've been wanting to play. But also, like, I don't know, I kept finding myself, like, going, like, too deep with this piece. Um, wish we had, like, a little more time, but, like, because, like, I think about death and, like, life and, like, the meaning behind it, like, the true meaning behind it, like, a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, but, like, going off of... Uh, you know, like, playing with these, like, two other people, like, that made it, so, like, we had, like, a lot of, like, meaningful, like, deep conversation, but, like, also, like, they made it, made me realize it's, like, oh, like, it's still theater, and, like, it's mm -hmm. still, like, enjoyable, so, like, I think that made it, like, a really good balance, so yeah. it was wonderful overall. Oh, thank you, yeah, I, 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 I agree. I, I, again, I, I am always fascinated by, uh, you know, material that really does grab you and it takes you, I mean, I, we, especially if you have a, a, an interest in it already and that imagination is already there, uh, you can really, you can really dive deep into this, this work. Um, and, and, it, and it, you can, it can affect you in a very personal way because it does talk about your beliefs and maybe challenges them. Um, I, I, I'm going to talk to both you, Brie, and you, Jen, together, because in that original discussion, you were the, you were the closers for the evening. You were the, um, clue us in on that and, 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 and 
I'll, I'll you started, Bree, and talk about like what you were talking about and how how it all tied into this whole process and what you guys ultimately came up with. Well, I'll say that it was a Friday night, <laughs> and I think we were just kind of letting it all hang out and really just enjoying each other's company and uh, talking about things like stuff and you know stuff as performers as people with disabilities jen and i and, and um as people with invisible disability uh, with you know we talk about this idea with zoom it's like how it kind of takes it, that away and mm -hmm. what does that mean and what does that mean in um like roles that we'd like to play and uh, roles that we're often put in mm -hmm. and it just i think the conversation just like went and just like went on tangent about society and otherness and this and it. I, 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 next thing we know, it was like ten o'clock. <laughs> so, and, and it amazes me um, what Nina was able to synthesize from from us as human beings. And when I got the script, I said, "Oh my God, is that really how I?" Got? Like at first, I was like, "Oh no, what did I do?" <laughs> because it was so. It's such amazing, amazing shadow work yeah. that she was able to do in creating these characters while also, you know, you know, these characters, even though they are, you know, deplorable in a way and they all did something not that great, they all have a lot of light in them. And I think Nina did bring that and did infuse um all of us w with with the, those light with the light side of the characters and i think um that was the most interesting part of the, the first like because the thing was so real and they were this it was so tailor-made at first it felt for me personally very very heavy but then i eventually the more we started playing the more fun i started having and this is just such a fun group of artists and we're yeah. able to talk about and, and act with this like deep metaphysical script. And then we can be like, mm -hmm. oh, what star sign are you? <laughs> and like, and, and shoot <laughs> crap like that. And like be people at the end of the day. And I think that is, you know, that is kiz magical and kismet when you can find a group of people who can just like jive like that, both creatively and also just as humans together. Yep. Again, leaving it to the leaving it to the fates. It's, a, it's that random, random pairing. I I could not have paired you guys together better if I, it, you know, I, there was no way I'd be able to, to, to come up with this. So sometimes you have to just throw it, throw it to fate and look at what happened. Um, yeah, I was going to say to you, Bree, you know, you gotta be careful what you tell a writer because you don't know, you, you know, you're it's, <laughs> it'll end up somewhere, you know? Yeah. Um, but I will say to you too, I, in all fairness, you know, artists, especially performing artists, when you're an actor, when you're a, a, a writer, whatever, you, we, we are observers and we create based on what we learn and what we see. I mean, you know, how many times have I seen someone on just a, a character that I say, oh, I remember that, I'm going to use that someday. And, you know, so that's what we do, we, you know, steal and borrow and, I don't know, take, take from our experience. So, and I loved it. I thought it was really, so again, so great. And I'm glad that 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 Nina was able to nail each of you in, in some way and that you really, really got like a, 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 at least a little essence of who of who you really are. Uh, and that that is now indelibly printed in this work, which is very cool. Mm. Um, Jen, what about you? Let's talk. Let's talk about this. What about again. me? What do you think yeah. of me? No, I thought you were. Well, yeah. what, what do you think of me? <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, for for uh, to get back to what we were discussing in terms of the first discussion with Nina, mm -hmm. it c became apparent fairly quickly that there was a common. It may have m morphed in different ways, but there was a common. Um, what I want to say, affinity for dystopia, <laughs> for oppression, for, uh, you know, the, the negativity of humanity and the uh, investigation into that and the exploration of that. And that's really what I connected to because I'm like an Orwell 
Huxley, sure. you know, Freakorama. And <laughs> one thing that I really think you hit on the head, Nick, was the was when you brought up the forgiveness, and we have talked about that in rehearsal too, but for you to pick up on that, I think is very telling. And for me to make a connection that the true, the true suffering exists, I believe, when we put it up upon ourselves, when we blame ourselves, when we um, hold ourselves overly accountable or um, responsible for something over which we had no control. Mm -hmm. You know, a mother who has a child and the child becomes sick and, the, you know, you don't have control over that. And how, how do you find the, the mercy in your own soul to forgive, to embrace your true power and who you are mm -hmm. so that you can continue to thrive as a person and grow as a person and afford yourself the opportunities to explore life mm -hmm. as a human being and not weigh yourself down with your own judgments and, and you know, the projected judgments of others that you may have like, oh, all they see is a wheelchair. Well, that may be, but when you're in a wheelchair, I, I am grateful that I was able or have been able to find venues that have enabled me to do the work to, in a way, appropriate this wheelchair. It's not all of who I am, but I know what the relation is that I have to it, and I know who I am, and therefore I'm able to be. And this is like sounds so heavy and ridiculous. Yeah, this is why we talked for three hours. No. <laughs> well, okay. not so deep in the weeds. I but get it. I get the it. The fact that you can, that people, we all are able to. I don't want to say just rise above, but I want to say mm -hmm. escape to exceed the parameters we have set upon ourselves. We're able to surpass and continue regardless. And, it, it, and it's up to us to recognize that. And I think this play so poignantly, I, I was like, how old is Nina? How old mm -hmm. am I? I didn't do that at that age. That's not fair. I know it's amazing, isn't it? When you have when you have a young person that just is so who just like worldly into the old soul, source. your old souls. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. old souls. Yeah. That's what. I, that's yeah. that's the only way. Beholden to all of these fabulous people, to you, mm -hmm. just was amazing, and it continues to be amazing. Uh, thank you. I I again I agree with you. I two just a few thoughts. One. Identifying with dystopian is very, very easy right now because we are living in a dystopian world. We are living in a time that we that we never really, I mean, while we while there's been little hints and traces of it throughout our lives, however older or young you may be, you I'm sure you can have you can you will say you have experienced it at some time, but it's never risen to the fever pitch that we are at right now. Forgiveness is what we all aspire for, what we need. We need, I mean, that's, that's part of changing our stars. That's part of that ability to move forward and move on. If you are, if you are chained to your, um, uh, your, your wrongs, the wrongs you've committed, you, it you, 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 you can't move, you can't escape, and you have to break through that in order to-, to Or you get sense. electrocuted. Right. Exactly. It's all there. It's in the, I'm not, I'm not making this up. That's all that those are that, that, that Nina's words, not mine, you know? So I find it so fascinating. Um, I also, uh, what I want to talk about in the next time uh, is the idea of forgiveness, perhaps without getting too, too into the metaphysical talking about, you know, your thoughts and ideas on, on 
how this life fits into a bigger picture or does it fit into a bigger picture or is it just you know this is it you you know do you you do what you do in this life and it's over and i don't know i mean i'm curious i'm also curious about the, the discussion uh because you talked about it before brie you mentioned the idea of how sometimes people see a disability on zoom and sometimes you don't I, i'm curious about that in terms of do you feel that in some ways working on this medium is a cheat and that it strips you of uh, uh, part of your identity? Do you identify as, as, you know, I think talking about identity is very, very important. And we can talk about identity in this group in many, many ways because everyone chooses to identify in their own way, whether that is disabled, whether that is non-binary, non -binary, whether that is, well, however, you know, and the idea, the idea of identity is very, very important. Um, I think the highest level of respect that one human can show another is to honor what, how they, how you want to be represented. That said, you can change how you wish to be represented every day, because the fact of the matter is no one is one thing, even if they choose to focus on that one thing and how boring we would all be if that's all we all, if that's all we saw and that's all we chose to represent. The mosaic is what matters and the, the ability to see that is what matters. So I, I want to talk about that. I think really quick, um, I think something that this play hints at, it may not be the center theme, but the idea of because disability and gender d does come up with that as well as, you know, moral ambiguity. It's about everything is a spectrum. Mm -hmm. All these identities are the spectrum and someone who could be the victim one moment could also mm -hmm. be a sinner and someone who could, you know, be perceived as disabled, could be not in one moment because one day they can feel more femme, one day they can feel more masculine. All these things are in constant flux and are always moving on a spectrum. Yep, I agree. I, you know, it's, it's hard, you know, the part of the human being a human being is getting people to go beyond what they see as one thing. That's the problem because, you know, we, we all, we, and, and to also, once again, allow people to make mistakes and be forgiven for those mistakes. If, if, if it becomes, if it becomes something more than that, if it, if, you know, if it becomes malicious, if it becomes, uh, you know, something that is hateful, that is something that needs to be also addressed as well. But anyway, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to muddy the waters here. I, I love the work. And, and just back to you, Nina, I think uh, the work is wonderful because it's very provocative. It, 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 gets, it does get you thinking about all of this. This is not just babbling. This is all very genuine and real. Tucker, uh, I have to ask you, because you've been, you've been so patient, uh, what did you think about this work? <laughs> It was great and remind me of the uh, play that we did back in that summer mm -hmm. with Bree oh, I knew and, and um, and Rebecca Queen Robinson yes. and a uh, joint uh-huh because they were all talking about the circle alive and forgive me. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it was also think... about the afterlife and all that and you know forgiveness uh -huh. yeah but from the other side uh -huh. from the living yeah, I, I love that. Yeah. And, to, and, and, and I think that would be a fun thing to see both of these plays uh, mirrored off of each other. Like there's so many ways, like, I, again, the reason why I, I wanted this play to come to happen here was because I thought it worked so well uh, in opposition to what we saw last night, because both of them dealt with trials and, and both of them dealt with, um, uh, you know, 
trying to trying to be, find forgiveness or to you know to prosecute. <laughs> um, so I, I, again, I think that's really quite quite wonderful. I am going into the point where I do sometimes people notice that I have a disability because a much peach is different. So I understand your point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and people just have a perception of, like, if they judge you based on what they see or what they hear, and that's as far as they go, they shame on them. They are missing so much. They are missing so much. And that is true for any one of us. It's yeah. not, it's not just, it's not just, it's not just limited to people with disabilities. It's, it's all of us. Yeah, because I had no if I did to win my bandana was it not they will take me more seriously without it and I for for a lot a lot is a like it's but if I show my seatbelt, then they will assume I am more disabled than I really am. Yeah. And I like how they play cards about forgiveness. Mm. Yep. So it's power. It's powerful. It's, it, forgiveness is powerful and forgiveness is, uh, it is an extension of love. So it, it, it falls into that spectrum. So, all right, you guys, listen, we've talked a lot. I'm sorry. I, I, we're, we've gone a little over here and we have to get into the other one. I want to give you guys a few minutes break. So I'm going to just say thank you. Um, for the yeah, and and we'll 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 talk more about this in the in the next one. So, you guys are wonderful. Thank you all so much. Such a wonderful wonderful show. Um, so uh, I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of this work. Again, come on, this is such rich work. I hope you're all enjoying it, and I hope that you can all um, appreciate it. And I'd love to. I wish I could open it up to to everybody that's watching so that we could all have a great discussion. But um, I want to thank you for being a part of uh, of of, of uh, our work and for uh, spending your time and giving us your attention. Those are very very special gifts. Um, we have one more night after this, you guys. Uh, please tell your family, tell your friends, and make sure you tune in tomorrow evening. We have another wonderful play to wrap this up. A great great piece. Uh, uh, by Rinalini uh, Kamath, which is called Humans, uh, directed by oh, the ubiquitous Stuart Green and an all-star cast, Jessica Carter-Ross. Uh, oh, uh, oh my gosh, Rihanna Vassour, you're going to get to see her act. Ben Rausch, Lisa Regal, that will be tomorrow evening. Uh, go to our website, tvtv.org. You can check out everything that we've been doing and where we're going. Um, if you really love us, click the donate button at the top of the page. You don't have to do that, but it, it does give you a little bit more investment in uh, our work, and we would appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, all of you watching, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow night, 7.30 right here, 8.30 on Facebook. Good night, all. <laughs>